Hi, friends, and thanks for tuning in. Today we're talking about AWS Lambda, what it is, why you would use it, and then we'll go build out our first Lambda function together. Imagine you're working on a project called TinyFlix, a platform that caters specifically to short films under five minutes. The basic flow looks like this. A user uploads a video, and then the application needs to do a few things. Create a small thumbnail, a large thumbnail, and also an HD version of the video. Once all of that's done, a video displays on a page where users can watch it. So let's talk about how AWS Lambda might work in this scenario. But first, you've probably heard that Lambda is serverless computing. What exactly does that mean? Obviously, something has to run your code. How can it really be serverless? I think it's maybe more helpful to say that it runs on a server that you don't have to buy or manage. All of the underlying work of provisioning the server, setting it up, allocating memory, and so on, you don't have to worry about any of that. The server stuff just automatically happens in the background. So it runs on a server that you don't buy or manage. Got it. But what runs exactly? Well, code, a piece of code like a chunk of JavaScript or Python or .NET or what have you. Okay, so it's code running, but when does it run? Well, in response to some event, like when something gets uploaded to an S3 bucket, or if there's a change in a DynamoDB table. Those types of things can trigger your Lambda function to run and do its thing. And just to wrap up this definition section, some people argue that a better name for Lambda would have been AWS scripts or AWS functions if that helps you understand a little bit better what they do. So small pieces of code that do a specific thing that run in response to some trigger. Back to our scenario of tiny flicks and the video uploads, these three tasks here in the middle would be perfect for Lambda functions. We'll upload a video to an S3 bucket that will trigger the functions to run and create the thumbnails and to process an HD version of the video. Now, just a really quick overview of the benefits to this. When you use Lambda, it kind of forces you to structure your code in a way that's modular. So you've got short scripts that do a single thing. And that leads to the second benefit, which is that you can fine tune the amount of memory that a function needs, which can help you optimize performance while also reducing costs. And finally, kind of going back to the first point of having each function do just one thing, this usually also means that your application supports parallel processing, meaning you can do 100 things at a time when you need to, and at whatever point you need to jump to a million things at a time, the underlying compute power can support that, and all of that's handled for you. And then when you only need to do 100 things at a time again, things will be scaled down. So scaling up and scaling down is a breeze. All right, let's head out to the AWS console and see how this works in action. We aren't going to be building out the full functionality of TinyFlix, but we'll do the basics where we upload a file to S3. That's going to trigger our Lambda function. And then we're going to output the content type. We'll say, was the file a video, an image, a text file, or what have you. Now, just a quick word about price before we get going. You'll see it referenced here on the Lambda homepage that you get 1 million requests free per month with the free tier. And then scrolling down, you'll get a little bit more information about what all of that means, as well as down a little bit further, the pricing based on various different configurations. We are definitely not going to be going over any of these limits in our demo. We're going to invoke this function one time. And if you're still in the free tier, obviously it will cost zero. But even outside of that, it will probably still cost zero. But this is just good information for you if you're going to be building out something larger in the future. All right, let's switch over to the AWS console. And before we dive into Lambda, I'm actually going to go create our S3 bucket where we will eventually upload files. So navigating to S3 and create a new bucket. And I'll go through this part pretty quickly. If you want more details on S3, then check out the video linked above and below. But for bucket name, I'll say TinyFlix, and then I'll add a date just to make sure it's unique. We do need this bucket to be in the same region as our Lambda function. So just make a note of where that is. For me, it's US West 2. If you needed to change it to another one, you'll do that up here with your region selector. But just make a note. And then for everything else, we're just going to go defaults and then create the bucket. OK, and then I will go to view details for that new bucket. OK, we're not going to upload anything just yet. Now let's go work on our Lambda function. So I'll open up a new tab here and navigate to Lambda. 
then create a new function. For this one, we're going to author from scratch and then the function name, my tiny flicks function. For runtime, I've got some code in Python, but you'll see that there's plenty of other languages supported here. We'll go with Python 3.12, and I do have the code available for you to download. So if you're following along with what I'm doing, make sure you're selecting Python. Now this next part is important, the permissions. The execution role is what gives Lambda permissions to do what it needs to do. In our case, we need to give it permissions to read from the S3 bucket. And for this, we need to create a new role. The easy way to do it for this particular scenario is to create a new role from a policy template. I'll give my role a name, my tiny flicks role, and then the template that we want, there is one for S3. So if you just type in S3, that will filter things down. And the one that we want is the read only permissions. So select this one. We can go with defaults and everything else and then create the function. Okay, we successfully created the function and this is dropping me into the new console editor. If you'd used Lambda in the past, this might look a little bit different to you. We can switch back to the old editor. If you no longer get this option though, then chances are they've basically forced us into the new editor. So that's what I'm gonna use. Let me just dismiss this message and this one. And then you'll also see in your function itself, in the coding part, that you're getting some help from Amazon Q, which is the AI assistant for coding and various other things. You can use that here if you want. I'm just gonna hit escape to get it out of the way, but that's what that is. Every time you create a new Lambda function, you're gonna get boilerplate code like this that you could build on. I've actually got the code here just in a Google Doc. I will link this below in the description so you can just grab it, copy paste. That's what I'll do here. And then I'll just drop that here, replacing all of the code that it gave me. Perfect. Now this is pretty simple code, but let me just walk you through the highlights here. First, we're starting with the Bodo3 client for S3. Bodo3 is basically the SDK for Python. So this will give us access to do things in S3, like down here, getting an object. Then into the handler itself. Whenever a Lambda function gets invoked, the Lambda runtime is gonna pass in two arguments. You'll see them here, event and context. Event is basically JSON that gets passed in with data for the function to process. For example, here's where we're gonna get information about the S3 bucket where we uploaded the file. And this line down here is an example of how we use it. So we're traversing down the JSON code, records to S3 to bucket to name. So that's the code that's gonna be coming in when we trigger the function. And then the second thing that gets passed in is context. This has methods and properties on it where you get information about runtime environment, the function, and the invocation. So this handler is basically saying, okay, here is the bucket. We're gonna extract that out of the event. And then we're gonna go out to S3, take a look at that object that was just uploaded. And then we're gonna output the content type. So was this a text file, an image, a video, that kind of thing. So pretty simple. All right, but just having the code here in the editor doesn't do you any good. We need to actually deploy it. So always make sure that you do that. You get a note over here that we have undeployed changes. So we will deploy the code. And now we can actually run this function. But first things first, Remembering back to our definition of what Lambda is, it's a piece of code that's triggered by something. And in our case, that trigger is gonna be when we upload an object to our new S3 bucket. To create the trigger, you need to scroll up to this overview here. Let me get this out of the way. And I wanna click on Add Trigger. Now there's lots of ways to trigger your Lambda function. You'll see here, just by how much scrolling we're doing, <laughs> that it can be triggered by a lot of different things. S3 is a pretty common one. So I'll just type that into filter down, select S3, and then we need to enter the specific bucket that would trigger it. So I'll type in tiny to filter down my list of buckets. Here's the bucket that I created earlier. And then the type of event, there's lots of different kinds of things that can happen in an S3 bucket. We're just gonna go with all create events, which will include that we uploaded something to the bucket, and that was already selected for us. 
we can go with the defaults for everything else. You do need to acknowledge that using the same S3 bucket for input and output is not recommended. So an example here would be, you upload a file that triggers the Lambda function. When the Lambda function's done, it outputs a file to that same bucket, which would then trigger the function to run again, do the output, which would trigger the function, and so on. So basically, we create an infinite loop, which obviously would increase your Lambda usage and costs. So just make sure you're not doing something like that. But then we'll say Add. And now we've got our trigger. Perfect. Now, there is quite a bit that happened behind the scenes when we did that. Not very obvious, though. So let me just briefly show you. If we come into the S3 bucket, and we go to Properties, and then scrolling down to Event Notifications, here we see there's an event to notify the Lambda function when new things are created. So that change happened in S3. And then back to the Lambda function, if here we come down to Configuration, and then Permissions, and then scroll down to the Resource-Based Policy Statements, we have a new statement here. This policy says that our S3 bucket is allowed to invoke this Lambda function. And all of that happened automatically just because we added that trigger here through the console. So just a bit of a behind-the-scenes peek at what's going on there. OK, so our function is ready to go. Let me switch back to code here. We deployed everything earlier. We have the trigger set up. So all we need to do now is go upload a file to S3. And hopefully, that will trigger our function. So let me just back up here to the bucket and click on Objects. And then I have an image file on my file system. Let me grab that real quick. Here we go. My Tiny Technical Tutorials logo. I'll just drag that over. An image file, obviously, and we will upload. And as soon as we do that, that should trigger the function to run. So let's get that started. Uploading. Success. Now let's come back to my function. And here, we want to go to the Monitor tab. And I was doing some testing previously with a function by the same name. So I'm getting some old data here. But let me switch to just the five minute view which you'll probably need to do as well, just so you can zoom in on things a little bit more. It does take a minute or two for things to start showing up here, so be patient. But while we're waiting, if you're finding this helpful so far, I would super appreciate you hitting that Like button. It really helps YouTube know that this is worth sharing with other people. And also consider subscribing for more content like this. All right, let's see if we've got any data coming back yet. Yes, we do. Here we go. So our invocations, right here, we've got one invocation. We've got things like the duration, whether it was successful or not, looking good. We've got one success there for the latest invocation. There's a lot of other information here. So this is all run by CloudWatch. And you can also view the logs to get more detail. And in our case, the type of content that was uploaded, that's being output to the logs. So you have to go there to find out if we uploaded a picture or a video and so on. So I'll just click on that logs link. And then scrolling down, you should have log streams here. So I'll just click into the latest one. And here we go. So there's a lot happening here. You'll see a lot of different things are logged, and you can expand these to get more detail. But here you'll see that we were loading function. And that is coming right out of our code back here in Lambda. You might recall seeing that line in the code. Loading function is where that's coming from. Some more information about when this started. But then this one was the interesting bit. This is the content type of the thing that we uploaded, which was a PNG file. That, again, is coming from right back here, this print statement. OK, cool. So it looks like everything worked as expected. We've got our Lambda function with a trigger from S3. We uploaded our file. The code ran. And then we saw the results in CloudWatch. Nice work. Now, if you're following along, Again, even though things are probably going to be in the free tier for you, I always like to go delete stuff that I don't plan to use in the future, just so I don't end up with any surprise bills at some point in the future. So let me walk you through how to get rid of everything here. For the Lambda function, I'm just going to back up to all of my functions here. And I'll select that one that we just created, my tiny flicks function, up here under Actions, Delete. And you'll need to confirm that and delete. 
close. And then for the S3 bucket, I will back up to all my buckets here and scroll down to Tiny Flicks. Up here, say delete. But you're going to get this error that your bucket has to be empty before you can delete it. So let's empty bucket. And we'll say permanently delete and empty. And then we can try to delete the bucket again. So up here, if you click this link, that will take you to the appropriate action. We'll enter the name of the bucket. And delete the bucket. So there you have it, your very first Lambda function that runs when you upload a file to S3. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up and also think about subscribing so you don't miss any new videos. Thank you so much for watching.